It's a brand new morning for Joe Biden's dreams of becoming president. He won big last night on Super Tuesday, reviving his campaign with victories in nine states. But Democratic Socialist Bernie Sanders is set to win the big prize, California. And that means their path to securing the Democratic nomination is likely to be a long one. Stephen Myro is the managing partner at Beacon Policy Advisors. He's in our D.C. bureau this morning. And senior columnist Rick Newman is here with us at the desk. So, guys, I want to show you something. I think the New York Post said it best. He's alive, right? Joe Biden, back resuscitated, back from the dead. Stephen, what happened over the past week? I mean, just a week ago, Bernie Sanders was the man to beat in this race. What has happened to make things turn and the momentum shift to Biden? Alexis, it's really kind of unprecedented in, in at least uh, uh, primary electoral history. But you know, there was all this talk about South Carolina being a firewall, and th that was a reasonable assumption. But what Joe Biden has done is not use South Carolina as a firewall, but rather as a slingshot into Super Tuesday to really uh, just outperform expectations, uh, which has been incredibly impressive. And I would say he's not just alive, he's now clearly the front runner. Stephen, do you think Mike Bloomberg will drop out shortly? Well, that's a good question. I, I think so. I, we, we already saw some uh, stories being put into place um, in various places yesterday where Kevin Sheiky, who's his political you know campaign manager and kind of his long term political consigliere is is kind of a, 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 a smooth operator. And you already saw the hints being placed yesterday. So um, it seems to be that uh, that would be the likely case. And Rick, how about embarrassment for, for Senator Warren? Couldn't even carry her own state of Massachusetts coming in third. How much longer is she going to be in this race? Uh, you know, she might stay in a little while longer. There's another debate coming up in uh, next week, I think. She, maybe she wants to participate in that debate. She must be wondering, like a lot of her supporters, what the heck happened to her campaign? Uh, and we've been talking about this in the newsroom. I think Elizabeth Warren just ended up too close to Bernie Sanders in terms of policy. And I, I, she just really didn't uh, make herself distinctive next to Bernie Sanders, I think. So it's almost as if she's in his shadow. And he's been the one carrying the progressive mantle for so many years, uh, including 2016. And she just seems like she's kind of saying the same thing. I, don't th I just don't think she stood out. But to come in third in her home state, which were, by the way, big surprise that Biden won Massachusetts, also Minnesota, um, the writing has to be on the wall for her. The question is, will she try to you know, keep her small revolution going a couple weeks longer or give in? You know, the Bernie Sanders supporters say, you got to uh, sign up with Bernie like the other moderates signed up with Biden. Rick, why do you think, uh, just switching to the mark a little bit, why does the market seem to like a Joe Biden presidency? Is it just that Sanders won't beat Trump? There's a lot to disentangle in the markets. I mean, obviously, markets are a lot more concerned about coronavirus and are we going to have a global recession and a U.S. recession right now. Uh, I heard, I, I like somebody last week said the, the what we saw with the markets plunging, uh, the sort of Bernie Sanders ascendancy and the probability of a Bernie Sanders presidency was an accelerant to the uh, selling last week. Mm -hmm. And maybe now uh, it, that accelerant has sort of burned off, and maybe we don't have to contend with the idea of a Bernie Sanders presidency. But the thing with Bernie Sanders is the more when it would seem more likely he would be the nominee, um, then it seemed more likely that Trump would actually win. So it was hard to you know do that calculus. And I would actually ask Stephen Myro, um, given what we've seen in the last 72 hours, Stephen, what do you what's your, what's your best guess about whether Trump will win re-election? You know, we've been telling clients for a while, Rick, that it's a toss-up. Regardless, even even with Bernie, we thought that people were underestimating his chances. Here's the difference between Bernie and Biden, in the sense that uh, with Biden, you're 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 expanding the map. With Bernie Sanders, it was clearly going to be a battle for the key three Rust Belt states, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin likely being the tipping point. That could very well still be the case with, with Biden likely now to be the nominee. But you're also putting some Sun Belt states in play, potentially. Does Florida, does uh, North Carolina, does Arizona potentially become a battleground state? in the general election. That's the added bonus you get with Biden. The real question is, who would be the stronger candidate in the Rust Belt states? 
I'm not necessarily convinced that it's Biden over uh, uh, over Sanders, but you know we're going to see Michigan coming up in uh, I believe it's in a week from yesterday, and you know Biden could be putting a lot of people's concerns to rest there if he beats Sanders in Michigan. All right, Stephen Myro, Rick Newman, thank you both for being here today. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.